if most of you aren't aware about what's going to happen with Chris Jericho, he might be signing a four-year contract with All Elite Wrestling, or AEW for short. So he's not going to be able to come back to WWE anytime soon. Now people will usually be upset by this since that it's been almost two years since Chris Jericho hasn't made an appearance. Well, if you count the ones in the Greatest Royal Rumble and Raw's 20th, 25th anniversary. But to be quite honest, they were just his his once in a while appearance thing. Considering the fact that he did that in Night of Champions and some other times that he did that in WWE. So to be quite honest, he did discuss about why he didn't want to come back to WWE, but I don't want to talk about them because, to be quite honest, you might understand if you watch the videos involving Chris Jericho's relationship with WWE. Let me just point this out that I'm a fan of Chris Jericho, and he is 48, 48 years old as of right now. And he's been in WWE since he made his debut in 1999. But before that, he went on to WCW. And then I can just say that his runs during WWE were kind of mixed. I mean, they're really great. But at the same time, after he left in 2018, after the Greatest Royal Rumble, in my opinion, there's really no point for him to have some kind of return in WWE. Why? Well, keep in mind that W that Chris Jericho has Chris Jericho's debut in WWE was almost twenty years ago, and if you can ca see all the moments that he did during that time, you can tell that there's really nothing else for him to do when he ever comes back to WWE, and that's also because of the PGL problem. First, let's get into the part well, you know. His time with WWE. You can tell that he was just trying to be a good face. But also, but at the same time, he has been in the mid-card for the most. He did win the Undisputed Champion and several other Intercontinental Championships. Which is actually kind of impressive. He's probably one of the best cruiserweights and mid cards that have ever came in WWE. Even his ones in ECW and WCW were one of his best. And he pretty much improved his character more once he went to WWE when he did a heel turn in order to feud with Shawn Michaels in 2003. So to be quite honest, he had a good one. But after for so many years of being in the wrestling business of WWE... And he is mostly born out from wrestling. So, for the first time in in 2005, he left WWE because he was getting burned out. Now, this isn't the beginning of Chris Jericho being a part-timer. Because you have to admit that wrestlers like Big Show, who left in 2006, need to get some rest. Because they're really not into wrestling that much. Although, even though that Chris Jericho getting fired was kind of forced... And people were still liking Chris Jericho, even if he was heel. I think they, I think they could have just done something better other than a your fire match. But that's just me, though. Anyway, let's get into when he returned to WWE in 2007. Now, when he returned in 2007, it was a good return, but at the same time, it was nothing special. It was special. However... After that, he just went back to being the Mick Carter because after failing to win the WWE Championship at all again because of an interference from JBL, he's just back in the Mick Carter. And he just basically went back to his Mick Carter persona. However, he did change heel for the very first time. But unlike being a cocky and a more of a selfish Y2J heel, he's more of a best in the world type of heel. And in my opinion, this is probably the best Chris Jericho that we had ever since he came back. I mean, when he was here during those times, he was more of a... He's not much of a cocky person, and he acts like he's the best of all what he does. Here, however, he really proves it, because he went through a lot of situations. 
in this match against Shawn Michaels at the Great American Bash, it was really brutal to the point that WWE was done being TV-14, and it's officially being TV-PG from now on. So, from, so everything that could really change from the TV programming, probably it was Chris Jericho's Chris Jericho's actions that caused WWE to be to be PG and stuff like that. Although I don't blame Chris Jericho, but at the same time, I think that that incident was just probably a once in a while thing that usually happens. I mean, I know that they did stuff like this before, but in the eye thing, it just really bugs me. But anyway, let's get into Chris Jericho's heel during the times of 2008 through 2010. Now, to be quite honest, his heel one was, well, mostly good. I mean, he teamed up with the Big Show to win the Unified Tag Team Champions, but then he lost them, and he managed to win the World Championship and, hit, and went to WrestleMania as World Champion and went out as World Champion. But then after that, he was drafted to Raw, and then soon later, he started to become more less into wrestling. Just like in 2005. In September 27th, 2010, he faced Wayne Orton again for the WWE Championship, and Wayne Orton punted him to the skull. And now he's completely out of action. And this was the last time with Chris Jericho being a part-timer. Uh, I mean, for a time all. Yep. After this, Chris, Chris Jericho's full-time wrestling career is officially, well, over. Now, he is a part-timer, but not like a part-timer like Brock Lesnar, who only wrestles on pay-per-views and barely defends his championship a lot in programming. Believe me, I really hate that so much. Now, when he returned in 2012, it was shocking, and his return was what was much more better in 2007. But at the same time, he didn't have anything to speak. He said they was going to win the Royal Rumble, but that didn't happen. But he did face CM Punk, which is probably one of the best matches that he had during his third return in the WWE. So to be quite honest, his return was probably his matches against CM Punk was probably one of the best in his career. I mean, he was a much he was in better shape than he used to be at the end of his second one in WWE. His match against CM Punk in Extreme Rules was probably one of the best matches that he ever had. Believe it or not, if you compare this match to it to the match at WrestleMania, but that depends on you. I still think that that this is more of a backlash match, and I think that backlash ma backlash matches were much more better than WrestleMania matches. But that's just me, though. Anyway, he did left again in 2012 after SummerSlam because of his tour of Ozzy, and then he would turn at the Royal Rumble. And he decided to turn face, even though he always did that at the end of his third one, but at but as fourth one with WWE, he's now a face. So he's no longer the best in the world cocky, selfish person that we've been seeing from 2008 to 2012. He's back to his Y2J attitude. And to be quite honest, his one is mostly there. I mean, I was excited that Chris Jericho has returned, but at the same time, he didn't got anything else to do. I mean, he was in an Elimination Chamber match. He lost to Fondago at WrestleMania 29. He did beat him in Extreme Wars, and he did face CM Punk again at Payback, but lost. And then after that, there comes Money in the Bank, where he faced Ryback, and he ended up losing. Afterwards, he did face RVD in some kind of a reunion match because they did face each other in, uh, in Unforgiven 2001. And then on the next, on the final match that he had before he left, he did face Curtis Axel, but then right back in the field, and this was supposed to win him off television until June of 2014. 
Yes, I'm not making this up. It took almost 11 months until Chris Jericho would turn from the w- to the WWE. And to be quite honest, I think that it's probably for the best. He's on a tour with Fozzie. And keep in mind that Chris Jericho has other things outside of wrestling. He, I do like his band Fozzie, so it's kind of fair for him to actually go on to different tours and different different places in order to keep his occupation on bands and other material. Because you have to admit that going outside of your home and going and doing other things other than home stuff is kind of something that you really need to have some other focus on. Because when you're Chris Jericho and you have other activities to do, a band, family, and wrestling, you can't Sometimes you just don't want to pick one thing and that's it. You always have to have some kind of other things in order to have some kind of occupation. That's bu- that's basically why Chris Jericho is a part-timer. The only good thing is, is that he doesn't take the championship with him, unlike Brock Lesnar. Even though that he hasn't been doing that during that time. Anyway, let's get into 2014. Because, in my opinion, 2014... Is where we get to see that Chris Jericho is really a part timer. Because when he returned at the end of June, he left after Night of Champions. And all he did was wrestle Bray Wyatt, where he defeated him once but lost to him at SummerSlam. And before he left, he faced Wayne Yorton and he lost. This is supposed to wire him off of television again. Yeah, apparently it only took him almost three months in the WWE, and he really didn't do much there, and he was still a face during that time, so there was no difference that he did make a return in 2014. So he really didn't do a lot in 2014 during those three months. He only wrestled, he only had a rivalry with two wrestlers, one of which that he had a feud years ago. So to be quite honest, 2014 was the time where it shows that Chris Jericho was more of a part-timer and not a full-timer anymore. Now he did return a year later, even though he did make some appearances in house shows, but I don't qualify house shows. But after Night Champions 2015, he's gone again. Yeah. He really didn't do much in 2015 because he only made one appearance at a pay-per-view, which was Night of Champions, and then he was gone. That's basically it. It was a great return, but I guess that just watching Chris Jericho leaving because they lost against the Wyatts, I guess they really didn't know what to do with Chris Jericho afterwards. However, that didn't last long because in 2000, at the beginning of 2016, Chris Jericho has returned again. If I can find the... Here it is. As a face again. And to be quite honest, this is probably the first time since 2007 through 2010 where he's now a four-timer again, but not the four-time that we were hoping for. He did feel with AJ Styles and went through, went through some serious rival feuds with Dean Ambrose and he had an alliance with Kevin Owens, but to be quite honest, it's probably one of the best times that he have ever did in WWE and it really shows. Even though that was waiting for AJ Styles to beat Chris Jericho at WrestleMania, but then again, Chris Jericho was at a losing situation against AJ Styles, so there was probably a purpose for him to win at WrestleMania, but... This was Russell, this was AJ Styles vs. WrestleMania. So to be quite honest, seeing stuff like this just really it's just really hard for, for it's just really difficult for me to take it seriously. I will say that the fast lane match was much more better than this. So anyway, when the brand split was returned fully until 2018's stupid decision of having every pay-per-view co-branded. They made Chris Jericho heal again, even though they probably did that before WrestleMania, but they made Chris Jericho heal again, 
And they brought in probably one of the best things that they did with Chris Jericho. And that is the list of Jericho. It's probably one of the best ideas that Chris Jericho has ever did. Ever since that he introduced it back in, 2000, in September of 2016. It really developed his character and more of a comical heel. And it's probably one of the best things that WWE has ever done with Chris Jericho. Because it really shows that... You know, if that Chris Jericho can do so many different things and new ideals. However, after watching the list of Jericho, there really isn't anything that he have ever did. I mean, uh, what I mean by that is that after this, there's really nothing that he can top. I mean, I mean, his alliance with Kevin Owens was basically one of the only things that he ever did in... He was probably one of the reasons why Kevin Owens is still the Universal Championship during this time. During that time. And I will admit that when he turned, when he turned face again just a few with Kevin Owens at WrestleMania 33, that's probably one of the best things he has ever did in order to face one of his rivals in, in his final full-time one in WWE. Even though they lost the championship, I will admit that they're trying to have new stars like Kevin Owens to at least rise in some shape or form since they lost the Universal Championship last month, even though it was Chris Jericho's fault. Now, Chris Jericho is managed to stay with the company for another month until payback, where he surprisingly won the United States Championship. Now, it's been seven years since Chris Jericho won a championship in WWE. The last time was his World Heavyweight Championship win in 2010, and his Universal Championship win was in 2017. Yeah. In case you don't know, some of the problems that Chris Jericho is having is that he really didn't win a actual World Championship whatsoever. I mean, if you count his Universal Championship win... That's basically the only WWE championship championship that he ever won. His one at 2000 doesn't count because of the referee's decision. And he did win three world championships. But like when Chris Melko says, it's not really the biggest prize of the WWE. And even if the World Heavyweight Championship was still good while it lasted when the brand split, the original one was still up at its prime for the most. It was basically what Chris Jericho did because of the brand split's idea of making new stars. Even though that Chris Jericho was already a new star before he left in 2005. Anyway, Chris Jericho did return in WWE kind of in the 25th anniversary. And he did a return and he did make an appearance entrant in the Greatest Wayne Wumble. But after that, there's really nothing else. To be honest. Because after that. Chris Jericho went to different promotions. Like New Japan Pro Wrestling. And sooner eventually. All Elite Wrestling. Now Vince McMahon has some major gripes about this. Since that. He and Chris Jericho has been. Have been friends. And making a lot of decisions. And agreements over the past 20 years. Since. Chris Jericho what made his debut in WWE in 1999. But the thing is, people have made videos about Chris Jericho choosing A&W's three-year contract over WWE. And, that was, and that's probably the biggest reason. Chris Jericho hasn't, like I mentioned, that Chris Jericho hasn't did a lot of things with the company, like winning major championships and the fact that, you know... He's running out of ideals. Even if people are still enjoying the list of Jericho, even that he's not a part of the WWE, that's basically the last thing that Chris Jericho has. Because of the PGL problem that people are obviously having an issue with, there's really no point for Chris Jericho to return to WWE. Especially that there is no way whatsoever that Chris Jericho will ever win the world champion. Which, I have to admit, that's probably the biggest reason onto why Chris Jericho won't return to the wrestling 
to WWE, I have to admit, if there's one thing that Chris Jericho should at least do if he ever returns to WWE is win the WWE Championship, have a one month tie away, and then lose it the fu- using the, using that at the next pay per view. Believe me, that's pretty much the only thing that he didn't accomplish. I mean, he did accomplish on winning it once, but that's it. It was just a one-time title win, which was actually kind of oppressive since he did defend it at multiple times on Raw shows. But other than that, when he lost it, he didn't win it again. And there's probably a reason on to why, because Chris Jericho's a part-timer. He isn't a terrible part-timer like Brock Lesnar, but he isn't the part-timer that WWE wants to see as a world champion. Since that, even though that they still have the brand split and they still have two major championships, even though that one champion refused to come in the wings, I'm looking at you, Brock Lesnar. They tried to have new stars like Daniel Bryan and maybe possible new stars who will easily become new champions and new faces of the company. They did show their respect to AJ Styles. Even if he was a popular free agent during that time, they tried to show some respect to new stars like at NXT and other wrestlers in SmackDown to at least have some kind of push. They're trying their best to make the WWE Championship more valuable, but considering the fact that Chris Jericho has done everything that he probably needed to do in WWE besides winning the WWE Championship again, there's really no point for him to have him be a part-timer in WWE again. And the major difference is that the reason why he's going to All Elite Wrestling is because everyone, like Cody Rhodes, has their minds that WWE isn't the same like they were thought they were going to get. Because if in case you don't know, in an all-in pay-per-view, which was a combination of Impact, New Japan, and Reign of Honor, if I'm correct, that pay-per-view was one of the best non-WWE pay-per-views of all time in 2018. And that really shows. Wrestlers like Cody Rhodes, Neville... I know he has a different name, but I can only pronounce him as Neville in WWE. And now Chris Jericho wants to move on to a different environment that is probably one that probably could make the careers much more better. But of course, the people at WWE didn't like this decision, and they even had this idea of banning all elite wrestling fans from WWE attendance. I didn't watch a video, but just watching, but I just watched a tile of a YouTube video about that. That that way shows that WWE is really scared that a next another another promotion might completely take them down. But then again, they've been doing this PG thing for about ten and a half years. Maybe they might do more changes. I don't know what's going to happen, but of why Chris Jericho is going to All Elite Wrestling really shows. Look, I know that people really miss Chris Jericho because he's a part-timer, but you have to admit that he's 48 years old, and he's getting close to 50 years old in 2021. Or 2020, if I'm correct. And he really isn't becoming much of a cruiserweight once once you get older and older. Soon later that he's going to become a Hall of Famer, which is which is probably WWE's answers when it comes to wrestlers not being able to do much of anything once they become Hall of Famers. Even though that they have wrestlers like Hulk Hogan, Shawn Michaels, and even Kurt Angle out of retirement in order to wrestle some matches. I still think that there's really no point for having Chris Jericho to wrestle in WWE anymore. In my opinion, he should be inducted to the Hall of Fame because there's really nothing else for him to do. Then again, there is that possible chance that he could be WWE Champion again. But considering the fact that they're focused on newer talent, and Chris Jericho hasn't won a champion over those seven years, I highly doubt that will ever be the case. 
So in my opinion, I think that Chris Jericho going to All Elite Wrestling is probably his decision on improving. I mean, if you look at his run in New Japan Pro Wrestling, he's more vicious and more serious, unlike his run in WWE because of the PG era problem. And I think that if he keeps continuing this new gimmick, he'll probably become more of a more of a good Jer- good Chris Jericho, even though that this will probably lead to him being removed in possible future games. But we don't know that for sure. Anyway, if you want more information about Chris Jericho's time with WWE and his personal life, I recommend watching the Breaking the Code Behind the Walls of Chris Jericho documentary. It really shows his experiences with his band, wrestling, and of course, his passion. This came out in 2010, so it doesn't discuss anything about his career of 2012 through right now. Just keep that in mind, but at least in this documentary, it really shows everything about Chris Jericho's life. That he wants to be a wrestler, but at the same time, he wants to be a rock star among others. And I'm not sure, and I highly doubt they will ever make an appearance at WrestleMania. Because, at the same time, it's really great for him to be part of WrestleMania. Because, in the Res- in the true story of WrestleMania, he did mention that all I think about is WrestleMania during his WWE one. Which, actually kind of works, considering the fact that he did make a lot of great WrestleMania moments. But at the same time, he really can't do a lot. I mean, his matches with AJ Styles and Kevin Owens were pretty much the only things that he have during those WrestleMania times. So I highly doubt that he'll ever make an appearance at WrestleMania 35 because there's really nothing else they can easily top. And considering the fact that he is having other plans like All Elite Wrestling, I guess he's pretty much done with his WrestleMania ideals. The only thing that he can do is show everyone that he's a Hall of Famer at WrestleMania, which is basically the only thing that he hasn't done. So to be quite honest, Chris Jericho is one of my favorite WWE wrestlers, but at the same time, he's starting to be coming close to becoming a Hall of Famer. Say all you want about the Hall of Fame, but you have to admit that wrestlers like Chris Jericho is starting to, you know, is getting sick of being in the situation that the PG era is causing a lot of problems so he has to go to a different promotion well where it is a bit more edgy and way more serious in order to improve his character and wrestling career again we don't know for sure if he's going to have a three year contract with AEW but it's a possibility that that could happen for his decision anyway that's really all I have to say about this. I know some people may have some disagreements about of Chris Jericho's decisions and the ideas that I mentioned is passable, but you have to admit that Chris Jericho is almost 50 years old and he's getting close to retiring. Again, we don't know for sure, but for anyone who's having hopes that Chris Jericho might have a return in WWE for probably like the seventh or eighth time, go right ahead. But keep in mind that if he's going to AEW, that's his improvement of his wrestling career. That's just basically his decision. Anyway, I'm Lonely Fan Play Free here, and I want to co- I want you to see your comments about your opinions about Chris Jericho's ideas, opinion, decision of going to AEW. I just really hope that he at least wins the WWE Championship once, if he can, during his final one in WWE, to become a two-time WWE Championship.